Hello everybody, what is up? You know the drill, it's your boy Nips. I'm still using the same headset and I'm here to talk about one of my newest favorite games. It is called Outer Wilds. Now, I've had my eye on this game for a while, but in a funny twist of fate, Outer Wilds, developed by Mobius Digital, and Outer Worlds, developed by the legendary people at Obsidian, were released in the same year, only a handful of months from each other. Of course, only a fool would confuse the two games, since they are so clearly different. Outer Wilds is a really cool space exploration adventure game, while Outer Worlds is a really cool space exploration game. Okay, okay. Maybe they seem a little similar at first glance, but trust me, they're wildly different, okay? Before we move any further though, let's get this straight. If you're expecting this video to be about a futuristic space RPG with an emphasis on quests and shit, then get the fuck out. Get the fuck out right now. That is not what this video is going to be about. Sorry. Alright, now that I got rid of those losers, it's time for the real video to begin. There's simply no beating around the bush. I am absolutely in love with Outer Wilds. Why, you ask? Well, hell, my dear viewer, why don't you settle in and let old Papa Nips tell you about what is perhaps the coolest adventure game of 2019. In Outer Wilds, you play as a creepy four-eyed alien, the newest recruit of your species' fledgling space exploration program that is known as, well, Outer Wilds Ventures. As I took my first tentative steps into the world of this game, I found myself captivated by this game's soothing atmosphere. Bathed in the light of a million stars, I could almost feel the warmth of the campfire next to me as I cooked and ate my very first in-game marshmallow. Mmm, char to a cursor, just the way I like it. In just a few short seconds, Outer Wilds drew me in with a quaint and charming atmosphere, much like how Firewatch did only a few years ago. I wanted to know more about this world. I wanted to know what was at the top of that wooden tower. So, I ventured forth, driven by the knowledge that I was going to get to fly my own spaceship, much like the cool model that I got to play around with only minutes after starting the game. I struck up conversations with locals who all said things that were cryptically enticing, each one of them adding on just a bit more information about my upcoming voyage as the newest member of Outer Wilds Ventures. Along the way, I even got to play with a couple toys, launching probes across the globe and messing around in the zero gravity chamber. Finally, my path led me to the observatory, where I was promised I would get my ship. And then I walked into a... museum? Hold up. You're telling me that I have a spaceship waiting for me, and you're going to expect me to spend the tiniest ounce of my time in a museum? Pass. Just kidding, I loved it. The museum actually had a lot of cool scientific and archaeological information, offering just enough tidbits to keep me guessing about the solar system that surrounds this planet, not to mention that crazy mysterious rock that kept changing its position when I wasn't looking. I suppose the reason why I'm talking so much about the town, the museum, and all the little things along the way is that, even though these elements might seem distracting or annoying in any other adventure game, I nonetheless felt drawn in by the build-up. Each of the interactable characters has just enough to say, offering little pieces of information about the world without giving you the full picture. The game encourages you to play around with a few of the tools that you'll be using in the near future, while not necessarily mandating that you participate or even setting limitations or parameters on your possible interactions. Okay, maybe I'm getting away from myself a bit. Let's slow it down and use this as a great opportunity to plug one of my favorite childhood games and intro segments of all time, The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker. Coincidentally, exactly like Outer Wilds, the Wind Waker starts the player off as they are suddenly woken up. It seems like the protagonists of both games choose really bad times to sleep, because both are on the cusp of a significant turning point in their lives. Link, from the Wind Waker, is about to come of age, while the four-eyed nameless protagonist of Outer Wilds is about to head off on their first voyage as the newest member of their species' version of NASA. The brand of intro featured in both games is particularly ripe since it makes a very real connection between the protagonist's inexperience with the in-game world and the inexperience of the players themselves. In both Outer Wilds and The Wind Waker, the player is set free basically from the start of the game, allowed to explore their homeworld at their leisure, taking their time to talk with locals, play with a sci-fi scanner, or gallivant around with the pigs until they're ready to progress the main story. 
However, it's at this point that the two games begin to diverge. In The Wind Waker, after you've had a little chat with your grandma, you're streamlined into a series of objectives that will further progress the game's narrative. You can complete these sequential objectives at your leisure, sure, but your progression is very much decided, each sequential step playing a small role in familiarizing you with the game's world, as well as its systems. In order to obtain a sword, you have to duel Orca, and don't forget to talk to Orca's more annoying brother so he can talk at you about history, and so on. Until you've completed these smaller objectives, the world of the Wind Waker will stand completely still, preventing you from progressing any further. Sure, your sister may or may not have been kidnapped by a giant bird, but what's the rush? She'll still be there when you're ready to go after her. These days, there are a lot of people who are increasingly finding this setup to be rather annoying. I'm sure you've gone back to replay a game that you really enjoyed. You know, that game from your childhood that gives you all the feels? Only to be annoyed at how long and tedious the intro section is, as developers will often spoon-feed a ton of plot exposition and basic information about how the game works before they feel comfortable enough to finally let go of your hand. I'm looking at you, Bethesda. In Outer Wilds, however, things work a bit differently. Technically, you can hop into your ship within a couple of minutes of starting the game. If you run right up to Hornfells in the observatory, they'll give you the launch codes and you're off. Actually, if we're being honest, you could even beat this entire game in a little under 20 minutes. That is, if you know what you're doing. Why is everyone named after rocks? But, for some reason, I didn't run straight to the observatory. Instead, I explored the town and talked to the locals, with each extra tidbit about the world of Outer Wilds spurring me onwards. In The Wind Waker, on the other hand, characters with important things to say are definitely not optional, and they feel all the more annoying for it. Remember Nico? Remember Nico's annoying ass with his dumb ass rope swinging game? I remember Nico, and I'll never forgive him. In The Wind Waker, certain tools are not given to you until developers are entirely sure that you know how to use it. In the case of your sword, you're not allowed to take it with you until you can show Orca that you can parry an attack three times in a row, and so on. Outer Wilds, for its part, has quite a few more tools from the get-go, and, much like the Wind Waker, has space set aside for little mini-games that will let you get familiar with them. Play hide-and-seek using your scanner, shoot some probes around the globe, or even play around in zero gravity as you fix a broken machine that's located inside your planet for some reason. The only difference, as I'm sure you can guess, is that none of these experiences are required in order to progress. You decide your own involvement with the world. What do you want? Statement of purpose? Should I email you? Should I put this on your action item list? Uh, look. You decide your own level of involvement. I will. I want to know certain things first. The first rule of Project Shut Mayhem. Shut up. And the relative open-endedness of some of these tasks allows you to discover and experiment with some of the finer facets of these tools at your own pace. Of course, this also plays out in how Outer Wilds gives out information about its world. If you want to skip right on through the museum and wallow in your own ignorance, go right ahead. No one's stopping you. Carrying on with this comparison, once you're finally able to leave your home island in the Wind Waker, you're streamlined directly to the Forsaken Fortress in order to progress the story. Of course, many adventure and RPG games do this. The Wind Waker isn't particularly unique in that respect, but it showcases yet another example of how Outer Wilds guides you in by simply letting go of the reins. I'm as much a fan of the Wind Waker as anybody. It was one of my two favorite games on the GameCube, alongside Resident Evil 4. But, I'd be lying if I didn't say that I basically zone out all the way up until after Dragon Roost Island, when the game finally sets you free to explore the world on your own terms. In Outer Wilds, as soon as you hop into your ship, the world is your proverbial oyster. There are no quest markers or guides, hell. Unless you talk to anybody who gave you a suggestion, you don't even know the full scope of where you can go yet, and that feeling is absolutely freeing. And perhaps it's a little unfair to compare these two games to a T, the Wind Waker being aimed at a slightly younger audience after all. But I think this is still a good example of how Outer Wilds uses a familiar framework in order to invite the player into a very unfamiliar world, while also avoiding the hand-holdy, patronizing feeling that most players get from games nowadays. At this point in my review, things are going to get quite a bit more spoiler-heavy, so if you're interested in experiencing the magic of Outer Wilds for yourself, this is a great place to hop off and go check it out. Finally settling down in my ship, I launched off and explored my homeworld a bit. Even though I could see interesting planets out there, I wanted to get my bearings first. A large hole in the ground drew my attention, so I decided I would check it out. I noticed some epic geysers, so I decided I'd do something crazy and hop on one of them. And then... I died. Then this happened.
And then, just as it ended, I woke back up where I started. So I hopped back into my ship and went to this gnarly looking planet known as Dark Bramble. I explored its spooky interior and found my first fellow explorer, Feldspar. After getting lost for a minute, I returned to Feldspar. I got frustrated, so I killed myself in the campfire. Lovely. I woke back up and decided I'd head to this other pair of planets, known as the Hourglass Twins. I landed on the Ash Twin, which was covered in sand. I hopped out of my ship and died again. Turns out, I forgot to put my spacesuit on and suffocated. It went on like this for a while, finding planets, exploring them, and then getting myself killed through one method or another, getting swallowed by the sun, smashing myself to bits, and even suicide when I got frustrated. Then. During one of my runs, I was goofing around in Dark Bramble again when this happened. The sun went supernova. So, what happened to me is probably a little bit different from what most players went through during their first experience with Outer Wilds. What's supposed to happen is, after exactly 22 minutes after you shove off, the sun goes supernova, swallowing your entire solar system in a blue light. The protagonist wakes back up, revealing that you're stuck in a time loop, implying that you have to somehow figure out how to stop the sun from imploding within that 22 minute time frame. I think it's really cool that I discovered the time loop in a slightly different way than intended, serving as yet another example of how the developers of Outer Wilds weren't really too concerned with a sequential narrative, because a true adventure is one that you make for yourself. This is basically what I was trying to get at with my Wind Waker comparison. Elaborate set pieces and narratives are all well and good, but your journey feels less like an adventure if all the major beats are scripted in an organized sequence. My favorite part of the Wind Waker occurs when you finally have all your tools, allowing you to explore all the different optional islands at your own pace. While you unlock these tools in the Wind Waker and many other games by completing dungeons, in Outer Wilds, however, these tools exist mainly in the form of bits of knowledge, and often, your ability to put two and two together will mean the difference between progression and frustration. Take, for example, the Hourglass Twins. When I first arrived on the Ash Twin, I noticed that it was covered entirely in sand, while a giant tornado of sand led all the way up to the other planet, which was full of cracks and crevices to explore. So, I hopped on over to that planet, where I found an intricate network of dark caves, with writing from an ancient race known as the Nomai guiding me onward until I discovered a bona fide underground city. I was absolutely ecstatic, because I legitimately had no idea what I would find next, and it was somehow difficult to find even with the writing leading me there. I continued exploring the caves around this underground city until I started to realize that the sand at my feet was rising. Frantically, I tried to make my way through new tunnels, climbing upward in order to escape the sand. But the tunnels seemed endless and the ceiling drew closer and closer until... I died. A while later, I had an epiphany. If the sand is rising on one planet, then surely the sand must be lowering on the other one. I felt silly for not putting that together originally, but it felt all the more satisfying for having pieced that bit of information together on my own, without any clear guide or explanation from the game itself. So, I waited around on the sandy planet, known as the Ash Twin, and marveled at how the sand gave way to a series of towers that lined the planet's meridian. I explored the towers and found a bit of Nomai writing here and there, but otherwise found nothing of interest, so I pieced out. Later on, located in different places on different planets, I found even more Nomai writing that suggested that those same towers were used as teleportation devices. All you had to do was stand on one of these suspicious purple diamonds to get whisked off to a different planet. I was simply ecstatic to head back over to the Ash Twin to try it out for myself. What I love about this is that you don't need a special tool or anything like that to work these towers. All you need is knowledge. In the same way that I discovered the time loop earlier than intended by getting myself killed, I'm willing to bet that a decent number of players found out what these towers do purely by chance, walking over one of the purple diamonds at just the right moment to get teleported to another planet. Outer Wilds is chock full of little secrets like this, as it features plenty of obscure rules and systems that temporarily halt your progress. Each of these obstacles can be defeated by one thing, your knowledge about the world of Outer Wilds. Allow me to indulge myself and compare Outer Wilds to yet another game which just happens to be one of my favorite games of all time, The Witness. In The Witness, you explore an abandoned island, solving little maze puzzles that you find all over. The only barrier to solving these puzzles is your knowledge of how the game's rules work. A panel that looks like this can seem a little daunting and confusing, 
But once you figure out that all you have to do is separate the white and black squares, it actually becomes rather easy. Of course, the witness doesn't tell you what these symbols mean. You have to figure it out for yourself and implement the rule you learn based on observation. If you know all the rules, you could actually finish the witness rather quickly. The fun in the adventure is the process of learning the rules. In Outer Wilds, one of the biggest gameplay reveals occurs in this thorny planet known as Dark Bramble. Yeah, yeah, it's super spooky and uninviting, but everything's alright until this happens. This single incident was so frightening that it scared me away from the deeper reaches of Dark Bramble for a pretty long time. After a while, I went back to try to see if I could outmaneuver the giant anglerfish. No dice. So I forgot about it for a while, until my exploration brought me to a crucial piece of information. A description of a child's game based on the anglerfish, where the children covered their eyes and tried to find the others using only their hearing. And that's when it struck me. Anglerfish are blind, but not deaf. The hum of my engine was alerting them to my presence. So I once again returned to the deeper corner of Dark Bramble, where this happened. As you can probably tell, this moment is extremely tense, achieving the perfect intersection of adventure and puzzle solving. The entire time, I was scared that the anglerfish might detect me at any moment, but I was also filled with satisfaction for having finally sussed out the trick to giving these big baddies the slip. This example highlights how Outer Wilds is much more than just an adventure game. It's really like a giant puzzle box. Exploration leads to obstacles, which lead to questions, which lead to knowledge, which leads to even more knowledge. Each next tidbit about the galaxy is hidden behind yet another bit of knowledge, challenging your observation and problem-solving skills every step along the way, while also presenting the player with bits of action and danger. Of course, we can't forget that Outer Wilds operates on a time loop, meaning everything gets reset every 22 minutes. This is a clever little trick that gave the developers the ability to create a fully fleshed out galaxy with complex relationships between the areas and the planets. When you only have to code the game for 22 minutes, it's easier to include strange occurrences and oddities, such as the sand filling up the Ember Twin, Brittle Hollow getting torn apart by a black hole, and the Sun Station getting completely swallowed by the Sun. So, you have a bunch of puzzles you have to solve, but you also have to solve them within a certain time frame. Show up too late to the Ember Twin, and the sunken city will already be buried in sand. Show up too early to the Ash Twin, and there won't be anything worth exploring. In Brittle Hollow, there's a crazy tower that seems inaccessible until you realize that it gets sucked out into a black hole a while later. Other planets and stellar bodies will cycle. The quantum moon, for example, will show up near different planets over the course of that 22 minutes. And the interloper is a frozen comet with cracks that will melt and refreeze over time, offering small windows to hop inside. Of course, it would be ridiculous for the developers to expect you to figure all these things out right from the start. Because of this, there is a tidy handful of planets, which includes Timber Hearth, Giant's Deep, and Dark Bramble, that stay more or less the same throughout the entire 22 minutes that it takes for the sun to supernova. These planets play a key role in introducing you to the world of Outer Wilds, because the developers knew to hide plenty of clues in them, and you can explore them at your leisure without worrying whether or not you've arrived to the party too early or too late. Okay, so I've gotten a bit carried away, and this video is starting to drag on, so let's hit the spark notes. I suppose the main takeaway is that adventure games are fun when your experience feels unscripted, when it feels like you are the one putting the pieces together. That's why games can't be afraid to let go of the player's hand a little. Let the kids roam, I say. Outer Wilds is not a dope-ass game because it has a really awesome story, or because it has super addicting action, or even because it has a unique graphic style. It's a dope-ass game because it introduces you to a world full of mysteries and has the bravery to ask you to solve its giant puzzle box rather than guiding you through. Not to mention that the ending is super trippy and awesome. Well. That's my review of Outer Wilds. Thanks for sticking it through with me. Have you played Outer Wilds or have any opinions on the structure of adventure games? Leave a comment to tell me how I'm wrong or what I missed. And if you want to see more content like this, don't forget to like and subscribe.